Hello, good morning, and all right. So we're gonna do a little something special on this Tuesday. It's gonna be a how-to Tuesday. I promised a tutorial slash demo last week, and I got uh, the inkling this morning to do it. So if you would like to know, <laughs> um, how I avoid second sock syndrome, stay tuned. So for those who don't know, this is Aradia Nawari, the resident witch and creatrix over at Aradia's Hand and Danaeus Divine, where I create myth, magic, and meaning for your everyday life with art, intuition, and energy work. I am, among other things, a fiber and wire artist, and today we'll be featuring a little bit of fiber. I will be taking this background away that you're looking at and zooming out so you can better see what I will be doing um, in just a moment. But um, I'll be demonstrating uh, toe up socks two at a time with Magic Loop using Judy's Magic Cast On. Now, little note this is only going to be the cast on. I'm not going to work the toe increases. I'm not going to lay out a pattern for you. This is just to get over your fear or uncertainty with using something new. So we'll do a little bit of talking first and then I'll get to the demo. And there you go. So first off, um, let me pause. I'll remove the um, background and we can get to the meat of this. So, all right, a few things before we get started. Here's a better look at the yarn and the needles that I'll be using. Um, like I said, this is toe up, to, toe up socks two at a time using Magic Loop with Judy's Magic Cast One. Um, and there'll be a, a slightly longer definition of each of these in the um, description box below. So make sure you check that out. If you're watching this on Patreon, you'll see it under the video. A little note, because this is a demo, I'm going to have it um, released to my patrons first. They'll get to see it a full week ahead of everybody else. And then it'll be public um, after that. Now. I have not decided whether I will make it public on um, YouTube or not, but you will absolutely be able to go to my Patreon and view this. Um, and you'll be able to watch it directly there. You won't have to leave the window or do anything like that. So just bear in mind that. Now why use this technique? So making toe up socks makes trying on your sock as you go easier without having to take them off the needles. Of course, you can always use waste yarn. You can always put them, slip them onto the cable of the needle um, if you're using a circular. But if you're using double pointed, you absolutely can't try them on. You will break your needles. So that's a consideration. Working at two socks at a time ensures that you don't have to deal with the second sock syndrome. So I have an example of second sock syndrome that I will bring on camera for you to see, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, second sock syndrome happens <laughs> when you start a sock and you don't have its mate. So this is um, a sock with um, loops and threads wool like. I'll put a link to that below. You'll be able to see the um, yarn and where you can buy it and everything like that as well as this handy dandy contraption that I've got and then I'll also link to the needles that are in there. So here's what happened. I started to sock for this class um, that I was taking. I'm on double pointed needles. I'm about halfway through the sock. I've gotten to the the heel um, waist yarn placement and I stopped and I stopped in part because I have to do a full other sock after I do this. I'm working from one skein and I don't want to measure it out. So what's probably going to happen to the sock is it's going to get moved to a pair of 
fixed circulars with a long cable. My preference is 40 inches. And then I will catch the other sock up to this point, and then I will continue. Uh, so that's kind of one of the issues of um, doing socks one at a time like this. And when you use double pointed needles, you can only do one sock at a time. The other option is for me to tough it out and try to finish the sock on the needles. And I actually intend on buying a second pair of needles, but it hasn't happened yet. So there you go. All right, so there you go. You see, you see the problem that we have there. And this is, again, second sock syndrome is just the propensity to start yet not finish a pair of socks because you're working them one at a time. And again, you can work a sock one at a time only with double pointed needles. You can work a sock one at a time or two at a time with the magic loop method, which I'll be demonstrating a little bit of here. And really, the focus is going to be mainly on the cast on, but I am using the magic loop method, which is just using a super long needle in loop circulars. So, <laughs> more about that. Um, magic loop is great for people who want to work on the round but don't like double pointed needles. Um, and I'll show you my double pointed needles out of out of their container. So as you can see, it's called a double pointed needle because it has a point on both ends. Now for me, I'm a very tight knitter. I don't have to worry about losing um, my stitches off the ends of the needles. I also use pretty long needles. These are eight inches. There'll be a link to them below where you can find your own. Um, a lot of people who knit socks use six inches. I've also seen some people be very brave and use four or five inch needles. Um, for me, I prefer the eight inch needle because I will also use these needles for swatches and other things. But like I said, a lot of people either love double pointed needles or they are terrified of them and will not use them. So if you are that person, that's where this thing comes in, into play. And it lets you do something in the round um, open or closed and open would be like working a sleeve closed would be working a sock toe up but it could also be a bag or anything where the cast on edge is closed instead of open now um, it is magic loop is the only way to work socks or sleeves two at a time so let, let me let me clarify that um, when I started, I did not know that. Um, I was hoping that there was a way to work on double pointed because I really like them. There isn't. Now, the one little cheat that you could do is if you got a second pair of double pointed and you just worked an inch at a time and worked, worked back and forth, which is fine if you want to do that, but that's still extra work because you have to put one set of needles down, pick the other one up, and then you have to remember where you are. And so it's a lot of extra work that doesn't actually make the process faster. So, um, and then finally, Gigi's Magic Cast On is an easy way to start a closed cast on as opposed to an open one, like for sleeves or cuff down socks. It is very simple. Um, and like the long tail cast on, you do use some of the tail as well as some of the working yarn when you're casting on. So you do need to make sure that you give yourself enough slack. So uh, to do this, this is what you will need. You will need a fixed or uh, excuse me, a circular needle with a flexible cable, as you can see, right? It's nice and stretchy. And I don't have, um, I don't have a non-flexible cable, but um, an example, uh, a lot of the non-flexible cables, they are clear, kind of a frosted um, white, semi-translucent color. You'll find them with um, boy, B-O-Y-E, needles a lot of times. I've also seen them on some clovers, although I think the clover takumis are a little more flexible. But as you can see, it's very flexible. These happen to be fixed needles, which means this part right here, the needle does not come off of the cable. Um, and in the event that it does, that means it's broken. And both like these and nitpicks 
these are specifically the Caspians and I will link to them below, um, are really good about replacing them if they do break. So that's the really, the benefit is if that happens, you can get a replacement. The, of course, the other thing you will need um, is this needs to be 40 inches. Um, you can work a 36 inch, you could probably work a 32 inch. Um, I wouldn't knit with a cable shorter than that. Uh, I think I tried with 24 and it was just a little too short and it made um, it made it more difficult for me to um, oops, excuse me it made it more difficult let's hold on okay I don't know I don't know what just happened don't worry about it but it made it more difficult for me to um, do some of the, the parts of the technique that you need to do <sighs> Um, like I said, I like likes or nitpicks myself. Other needle um, that have a flexible cable you might want to consider are Knitter's Pride or Addie's. I don't have any experience with either of those, so I cannot vouch for their efficacy or durability. Like I said, these can break, but they're, both companies are very good about replacing them if that happens. And then, of course, the other thing you need is yarn. Ooh. For this, I'm going to be using a single skein as well as two skeins um, so that you can see that you can do it both ways. Um, a little note is if you use a single skein, you need to have about 400 yards or 100 grams of yardage because that's about an average pair of crew cut socks. And a crew cut sock is about halfway up your calf-ish. Whereas you can also use two balls. If you do two, you can have them down to 50 grams a piece. You can use a larger amount, but you need no less than. And then I will link to both these yarns. This is Studio Nicole, which is found at AC Moore. It is their brand. And this is Lion Brand Sock Ease. This is not enough to do a full sock. This is just some spare that I had um, left over. So um, I am aware of that. I'm just going to be demonstrating so it doesn't matter how much I have as long as I have enough for that. And that's it. There are other things, of course, that you need to, to work on this project, you know, if you're doing socks or sleeves or what have you, but that would be in your pattern and it would list the materials, tools, or notions that you need. So. Last thing before we get to the demo, other considerations. You can do two socks at a time with one or two skeins, but again, you need to have the proper amount. Um, if you're not savvy, <laughs> um, uh, 100 grams is about 3.5 ounces, and then uh, the 250 grams are obviously half of that, and I'm not gonna let you see me fail at math, so yeah, sorry. Um, sock yarn is typically sold in both amounts, so be sure to check your label before beginning. Um, this, for example, I knew it said 50 grams on the label. This one is on the label, it's about four to 600 yards. So is the wool like. The wool like is 600 yards, and so I, did, I don't need to uh, buy more than one skein. Another yarn that requires that you buy two skeins is um, Patton's Croy Socks. And I will also link to those below. And if you've been watching my videos lately and checking out my Instagram and my other social media, you've seen a lot of the patents because the patents is um, a lower cost yarn. And so if you're going to begin socks, it's obviously easier. So um, I would say this is the Lion Brand Sockies is on a slightly higher end. You only have to buy one skein, but the cost of the single skein is very close to the cost of two um, patents. Um, the Studio Nicole is actually, I think, a dollar a piece, so it's two dollars for a pair of socks. However, um, these are called the samples by Studio Nicole. So what happens is they are not marked, there's no dialogue, there's no name. You have a little label that tells you very little information about the yarn and if you know how to read labels and you understand 
the fiber content that typically goes with sock yarn, then you'll be able to find it. So look for something that has a little bit of nylon in it. I've seen ones that are acrylic and nylon, I've seen wool and nylon, I've seen various other fibers in nylon, but you want a little nylon or something that's like nylon because there are a few synthetics um, that also work like, I think polyamide is one of them. And uh, I, will, I will double check that in below and so if I'm wrong, I will correct that there. Um, There we go, note made. And um, so it is now, this is me saying this to you. I've knit now three pairs of socks. I'm an adventurous knitter, however. I would consider myself intermediate or advanced intermediate. Um, I don't want to toot my horn, own horn and say that I am experienced, although I probably am because I am an adventurous knitter. And if you're an adventurous knitter, you're much more likely to become experienced quicker because you're going to try things before you're ready to try them, before you know how they work. And that will give you a crash course. It does not matter <laughs> how experienced you are. Um, to me, if you can knit and you can purl and you have the capacity to learn some simple increases and you can follow a pattern, you can knit socks. Some people believe that you shouldn't start off knitting socks. Start off knitting whatever the hell you want. <laughs> Let me just tell you that right there. Um, because you know what? I, if, if I waited till I was ready, I might not do anything. Instead, I will crash course and just approach it with the mind of a beginner. Know that, hey, you're going to make mistakes. It's not going to be a big deal and you can undo it. So it's okay. Don't be scared, <laughs> as, as they say. Now, when you work from one skein or two, it doesn't matter, you do need to take care not to tangle your strands. So when this is on the left, when this is on the right needle, and this is on the left needle, this is where these skeins need to be. If it switches, you need to turn the skein. That way, these strands of working yarn that you have are not tangling together. And if you find that you forget, put your sock down and slowly and carefully twist the yarn so it's untangled. That's all you have to do. It's not a big deal. You don't need to freak out. As long as you don't tug viciously <laughs> on your yarn, it'll be fine. Um, the same thing with this. We're going to be working from the inside and this outside strand. So what you'll do is you will turn your yarn as needed. And you can turn it clockwise, you can turn it counterclockwise, it really doesn't matter. You just need to consistently turn it the same way. Now what I will say is if you forget, these both have, um, if I recall correctly about this one, sock yarn typically has wool in it and wool has a tendency to stick to itself. So if you forget, you may again need to take a little care as you untangle to make sure that the yarn doesn't stick in on itself because it will and then it will not or it'll almost start to felt together because that is the nature of wool because there are scales on the fiber. and. Um, we'll put a, we'll put some random information down there for you to check out so that you understand why wool behaves the way it does because I'm a nerd and I like to know stuff like that. So, um, the other thing that you need to take into consideration is, um, I like to work from the inside out. Now, when you're working with two balls, and these are actually called cakes, but if you're working with two uh, uh, different cakes of yarn, you can work from the, in, the inside or you can work from this outside piece. Um, it is my preference to work from the inside. Um, what happens though is after it gets smaller and smaller and you've worked more and more of this, this is gonna start to collapse in on itself. By that time, for a sock, you're almost done with the yarn, so it's not really a big deal. Um, for something where you're going to have a lot left over, that may become a problem. When you work with a single skein, you work from both ends and so it's not an issue. Now if you work from two skeins and you want to work from the outside, that's perfectly fine. Again, 
just have care that you don't tangle it and know that um, if your skein is not very tightly wound or very neatly wound it's going to get a little floppy after a while because that's what happens and I will be rewinding all of these skeins for a nice picture after I've worked everything up so you can see what a nicely neatly tightly wound skein is and I I make my skeins um, nicely wound or cakes rather by putting a little bit of tension on the yarn as I wind it. Um, I do stress that it needs to be a little bit of tension because if you pull too much tension on the yarn, you will misshape it. Now, because these have nylon in them, they're gonna be a little more forgiving, but you wouldn't wanna store them for years like that. So just random little <laughs> facts about yarn that you didn't know that you wanted to know. So um, the last thing <laughs> I want to uh, the last two things I want to mention is it's probably a good idea to have some contrast between the color of your needles and the color of your yarn. In this case, I'm not following that rule because I feel confident enough to work like this. Um, metal provides a nice amount of contrast or just a lighter wood. So as you can see, this has a nice, this is bam, these are bamboo. These have a nice contrast. It's very easy to see the yarn and the needles and not confuse the two or not skip a stitch or drop a stitch. Now, um, if you're looking for one that gives a lot of contrast and you use a little dot curlers, try bamboo. Or if you like the knit picks, you can try their Sunstruck is the name of them. And don't worry, <laughs> I will link to them below. Um, so that you can find them and I'm just gonna link to the Sunstruck page so you can just fiddle around with that um, again me personally right here with good lighting I can see this just fine it's not a big deal to me um, so that's it the, your last consideration is to make sure that you have good light do not get a book light and try to sock knit Get yourself a nice light. Um, you can try an ot light. They do have small, small lights. They are um, not inexpensive. However, they're very good lights and they're worth it. So uh, I will also link to that below because I love an ot light. I don't have one, but I do love them <laughs> because I like to knit when I can't necessarily see everything 